Why would a publisher selling King James Bibles to King James Bible readers write notes in it to make you doubt the King James Bible? Is there something in it for them? Or are they just afraid of the King James Bible? Or both? Let's find out. Hi, I'm David Daniels for Chick Publications. In another vlog, What Are Publishers Hiding? I told you that there are Bible doubting notes in footnotes in the King James Study Bibles. Well, here I'll show you a few in just one of those study Bibles. Amazingly, these are the same Bible doubting footnotes you'll find in the NIV and the ESV and the New American Standard and the New Living and any host of other Bible versions and study Bibles. When the cry for King James Bibles came up, they met the demand by making newer King James and uh, more kinds of King Jameses. But why did they add those same tired, Bible-doubting footnotes to the King James Bibles? Are they trying to get people to turn away from the King James? And if so, why? This is a brand new the King James Study Bible, second edition, copyright uh, 1988 and 2013 by Jerry Falwell's Liberty University, and printed by Thomas Nelson, who'd rather have you buy a new King James or another one of their Bibles than this. Let's take a look at some of the notes, shall we? Mark 16, 9-20. Here's just an excerpt of some of the notes. Uh... It says, ancient manuscripts contain two different endings for Mark. And then it says, in light of the uncertainty attached to verses 9 to 20, it may be advised to take care in basing doctrine upon them, especially verses 16 to 18. My Ryrie says the same thing. In fact, all study Bibles pretty much have that same note in them. Um, why? Are they afraid such some sort of false doctrine is in the verse? They'll never tell you that. They'll never put that warning in. But they want you to be, how do we put it? Uncertain. Isn't that the opposite of faith? How weird. Philippians 2.7 has a big note in it. It's the section on Jesus where he became a man it actually put into the, these voluminous footnotes, he emptied himself. He emptied himself? The scripture in the King James is perfectly clear. Verse 7, Philippians 2, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. Um, emptied himself makes him look like he stopped being God. Isn't that what some of those TV preachers have been saying? Hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 is perfectly clear as it is written in the King James Bible. Abstain from all appearance of evil. But here in the margin, they put the inaccurate every form of. Every form of evil? No, every single place where this word appears for appearance... It means how you appear to others. Same here. So, this is about maintaining a good testimony, isn't it? So, why did they put the center column note? God isn't just saying to avoid every form of evil or evil wherever it appears. It's saying avoid, avoid you or me looking like we are doing evil. So, if the King James is so clear, why did they write the false reading in the margin? One more. 1 John 5, 7 to 8. Just a part of the, of the uh, notes here. It says, verse 8 should read simply, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. The longer versions of these verses made their way into the traditional printed Greek Testament, TR, and thus into the King James Version due to influence of the Latin Bible and only four late Greek 
manuscripts. So if they don't believe it, why did they leave it in? Well, because it wouldn't be a King James Bible without it, and you wouldn't buy it. So next question, why didn't they hire a person who believes the King James to write the King James notes in the King James Study Bible? <laughs> Didn't that make sense? It's not like there's any shortage of believers. I told you in another vlog and I gave you the evidence that there's most people who actually read a Bible, read a King James, regardless of what version they buy or why. Surely they could find a few believers in the nation and have them write believing notes to show why God's perfect words are translated into English in the King James Bible. It would inspire faith, not doubt. But if they inspire faith in the words of the King James, what do they need the other Bibles for? Publishers have a huge inventory of other versions, especially the publisher of this one. Uh, Thomas Nelson and Zondervan and World were all bought by Harper Collins under Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. And this is called now Harper Collins Christian. Although the owners are not Christian, not by a long shot. That's over 55% of all the Bibles published. Many versions, and they are scared to death of anyone or anything, including a King James with Bible-believing footnotes, interfering with their bottom line. Profits. You know, gain. Filthy lucre. Money. First Timothy 6.10 says, the love of money is the root of all evil. And yes, they've got a note messing with that too. They love money. They love publishing uh King James, but King James with Bible doubting footnotes to get you to look at their catalog for their other Bibles and their newer versions as well. So they're King Jameses, but they're Trojan horse King Jameses with notes waiting to jump out at you and get you to doubt and question your faith. No longer believing God's holy and preserved words. But as my old mentor used to say, the scripture stops here. The rest are man's opinions. Do believe the King James text. But don't just believe the notes and the introductions. Don't let a publisher's Trojan horse, King James, spring its trap on you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.